I used to use this distribution before I started my Cup of Linux show. This distribution is great for newcomers to Linux who want to give it a try. Great for Windows users because it does have an error of familiarity. This is their latest release. I'm looking at Zorin OS 7 Core, and we're going to look at that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. <laughs> okay, this has some pretty cool desktops in this, and I'm going to show you uh, two of them that this has from the login menu. Uh, so we're going to do half of it in the default desktop, which we're looking at right now, and then we're going to go in GNOME Fallback, and I'm going to show you some of the really cool effects that they have built into this. All right, first, you'll see that we have a, a button here on the lower right corner of the screen uh, where you click your name. There's information about the computer. If you're looking to get help on this operating system, this is where you would go. Your system settings are taken care of right here you click on that and it opens up a dialog that will allow you to configure your system to your liking everything you need for configuring the system is easily found here you get a the time with a calendar volume control you also get a battery indicator and from here you can configure your power settings and then of course right here you can configure your network assets okay next you get a, a quick link on the lower left of the screen to Rhythmbox Music Player. A quick launch to your file browser, which is Nautilus. And then of course, by default, this has Chromium installed. But if you don't want that installed, you can just do a search here for Zorin. Okay, and then you have the Zorin Browser Manager here. And when you click on this, it will ask for your root password. And then from here, you can change this to whichever browser you want out of the selections. You can have Firefox. You can um, uninstall Chrome and um, maybe put in Opera. Or if you want something really lightweight, you can go with Midori. They even have a private browsing session, which is nice with this as well. And Midori has actually improved over the years. Zorin also has a look changer. You can choose how you want this to appear. You can give this the appearance of Windows 7, Windows XP, or GNOME 2. We're going to have a look at the GNOME 2 in a moment. To do this, we need to log out. And then from the login screen, we're going to press the Zorin icon here, and we're going to choose GNOME Fallback. Type in your password, and press Enter. Now that we're in the GNOME desktop, you will see that you have four desktops to choose from. And by clicking on them, we'll spin the cube. <laughs> That's kind of cool. An icon here, which will allow you to collapse all windows and show the desktop. Okay, and then, of course, your uh, navigation menus are right here for uh, logging out. They're just reversed. Instead of being on the bottom of the screen, they're on the top of the screen now. Quick access to all of your places are right here, and all of your applications. And accessories, you get an archive manager, calculator, character map, a disk utility, uh, a launcher for your file browser, a font viewer. You can take a screenshot, especially useful if you run into an issue and you're participating on the forums. You can show them a screen capture of the error that you had. They also have a, a lightweight text editor. In games, you get Isle Riot, Solitaire, Mahjong, uh, Mines, Quadrupicel, and Sudoku. In graphics, you get a document viewer, the GIMP, an image viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Shotwell Photo Manager, and Simple Scan. In internet, desktop sharing, Google Chrome, Pigeon, Internet Messenger, Romina, Remote Desktop Client, Thunderbird Mail, and the Zorin Web Browser Manager that I just showed you. You get a simple document viewer and the full LibreOffice suite preloaded. With this, in sound and video, you get Brazero Disk Burner, Cheese Webcam Booth, OpenShot Video Editor. But the thing I 
wish that they had included with this though. To get the most out of OpenShot, you really need to have Inkscape pre-installed and you need to have Blender installed because you can do some pretty cool things with 3D titles and that requires uh, Blender. Okay, and in System Tools, a number of uh, utilities here to get the most out of your system in administration. You get a uh, partition editor, you get the software center, the software updater, a startup disk creator, the synaptic package manager, and a Windows wireless driver, which is great for those of you who can't get Wi-Fi working. You can use a Windows driver to get those working. And then, of course, a number of system preferences are here to change the wobbly windows and all the effects that this desktop has. You'll want to use the Compiz Config Settings Manager. If you check out my channel, I have a section on that where I show you how to do pretty much everything you can think of with Compiz. So that's something worth uh, looking at. And then, of course, a plethora of other tools are available here. Uh, some universal access tools are available as well. And then in Wine, this is the cat's meow. You get Play on Linux. And Play on Linux here will let you install a lot of Windows applications and games and get them to run natively on your system. Now, my experience is that it is kind of hit or miss getting many of these applications working. But with Play on Linux, it takes the guesswork. If it's in the, if it's in the listing here, you're, you, you have pretty good odds that you're going to be able to get that game or application running. Uh, a number of accessories, development tools, education tools, the mother load of games are all listed in here for easy installation. And what it does is it creates its own uh, Windows compatibility layer with which to store the game files uh, into the system to allow you to get them running. One thing I recommend though is having making sure that your graphics card is up, updated with its latest drivers for Linux so that you can get those working. A middle mouse click on the desktop will allow you to rotate through your desktops in 3D which is real cool. And they have an ultimate version that is worth shelling out the few extra bucks for. It does give you some additional features. However, all of the features that Zorin provides in its ultimate edition, you can get free online somewhere else. Online, Zorin OS brings more goodness to the table for anybody that is curious about trying Linux for the first time. I recommend you download this and give it a try. The nice thing about this, or most Linux distributions out there, you can burn this to a, to a DVD and you can run it on your system without even installing and play with it and see if this is something that would suit your needs. Well, that's all I have on this right now. Thanks for watching.